just wondered, top of mind, how you make sense of it. Well, you know, obviously you got you to take your hat off to uh, Coach Satterfield. Those guys, anytime you shut out a college football team, that's a heck of a deal. And, you know, it was a very condensing win, and uh, they have a good football team, and my hat's off to them. They did an excellent job. Where do you start? This was the competitive game in the second quarter. The kickoffs killed you and, and never got any momentum back. Well, like I said, when you, when you start talking about turnovers we had, you know, we're, we're turning the ball over. We're not converting on third down. Those guys got twice as many plays as us. Our defense is out there twice as many times. And, uh, you know, it gets to be disappointing, uh, obviously, not being able to produce on uh, one side of the ball. And uh, it gets to be extremely frustrating. That one side of the ball, the offense right now, you knew coming in, the third down's been a sore subject. Tonight it is one for ten, and the, the only conversion is later. Is there something common there that's happening for you? It, you did have some penalties, but it, it wasn't like it was always third and twelve. You know, uh, I don't know if there's a, com a common thing except that we're not converting them, and there's no doubt that we, we need to do a better job, and uh, we're not getting it. On the defensive side, if you're going to have that many plays, there were plays to be made. You had 12 tackles for loss. So there are guys out there that want to show what they can do. What, what did you see that you can rally behind or, or be enthused about? Well, you know, you're constantly out there just seeing uh, all those uh, plays. And, you know, there's a freshman on the end of that one and a freshman on the end of that one. And then you've got seniors and you've got some sophomores. We're just young. And we can keep saying that, but it's not going to change. And they're going to be older. And there's going to be a light at the end of the tunnel of all this. These guys are going to be good players down the road. We just got to weather the storm. We said on the broadcast tonight, if, if that's the upside of the season, that you're getting experience for these guys, you have to make it worthwhile, right? So is that why we see late in the game, you, know, you, you called timeout before punt received down 30. That's because you're trying to line up a guy, right? In a, in a, just take us through that bit of it because I think it doesn't it's not that apparent to the to the viewer here that you, you've obviously got to make this stuff count for people while they're getting thumped well you're trying to make it count in this I believe the second time now is because we were short one guy and we had to get another guy out there we want them to run a fake when we didn't have all our guys because we had a a freshman on the bench that was supposed to be out there and you know it wasn't like we're trying to run up the score in that situation we're just trying to get 11 cats out there and we already had taken one so it didn't make any difference to take another one Jacoby Morgan gets rocked on his last play. Uh, I know you're going to evaluate him medically. Uh, are, are you adamant about trying to get him ready to be back in there next week? Is that part of being the number one quarterback at the moment, or, or do you look to something else? Well, we just got to see where he's at. Obviously, we didn't want to put anybody out there uh, where they can't protect themselves, and it's just really not fair for me to say anything about that until I, get a, uh, I hear from the doctors exactly what happened and how he's feeling. This is one, and I know this will be a tough ride home, and you're trying to get out of there, so we'll turn you loose. But this is one where your entire roster, right? I mean, pretty much your, your whole travel roster, you had to shift guys in positions and whatever, but they all got out there. So this is on everyone. Everyone's part of it right now. Well, you know, everyone's trying to do their best. You know, all, some of those guys are playing things they have, doing things they haven't done before. And, you know, some of those guys are playing defense for the very first time. We had just, Jace, I mean, J Justin Barron out there playing defense for the very first time coming up and make tackles. So there's a lot of that stuff going on. But, you know, anytime you, you go out to play a football game and, you know, and you lose a game like this, it's going to be difficult. But a lot of, a lot of new guys got into the game, yes, to answer your question. All right, two more against uh, an NC State team that's kind of gotten it going in Notre Dame. So it doesn't get easier. Coach, uh, thank you for your time. Safe travels. Thank you. Orange head coach uh, Dino Babers, guys. And Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Coach Babers. We're going to move into this section now. We're going to start with Mario Saka from WSYR. Yeah. Hi, Coach. Take two. Um, obviously, offensively, it hasn't clicked this year for your football team. And, yes, we understand that you're young, but has this been the most frustrating season for you as a head coach when you look at that side of the football? You know, you, um, you know, obviously, I understand how young the team is. I understand the parts that are missing, you know, Obviously, I'm extremely disappointed, but I'm also encouraged about what can happen down the road. And I have to keep that positive attitude going because I really do believe that's the key. If you're going to go through this much pain on the negative, then there better be an upside of the Peter totter where you're going to be able to have an a lot of positive. And uh, we're going to continue to work hard for the rest of this season 
and and the start of the next season to make sure that we can swing this thing back around. Safe travels home, Coach. Thanks. Thank you. Next question, we're going to go to Stephen Bailey from 247 Sports. Hey, Dino. Um, I'm not sure how aware of this you were, but there, on the television broadcast, they said that Jacoby and Morgan was going to go to the hospital. Uh, obviously, he didn't. <laughs> he didn't. Um, surprised? I was about to say what? I didn't I know. <laughs> I was surprised too, and then I was very surprised to learn he didn't go to the hospital um, when I got a message from from Tyler Katie. Like, were you aware of that at all as it was going on? And I never, I never got a message that Jacobian was going to the hospital. No. Uh, do you have a feel at all for? I mean, obviously he was evaluated for a head injury. Any any kind of gauge as to what the assessment was? I ha I still have to get back into the training room. I came to this press conference really really fast. So I didn't get I didn't get any of that immediate information, and most of it will probably uh, be diagnosed later on between Sunday and Monday. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Next question, we're going to go to Christian De Guzman from Noon's Magician. Hi, Coach. the uh, The offense, the, the offensive line, uh, kind of seemed to regress a little bit uh, this week. Um, how do you evaluate uh, their performance? Uh, because it didn't seem like it was the best uh, performance from that group. I have to uh, I have to go back and watch the tape. Some of that stuff I can see with the naked eye, but sometimes when it's on the other side of the field or the other side of the uh, offensive line away from my sideline, it's a difficult for me to see exactly what's going on. So it really wouldn't be fair to uh, just to just talk about that stuff. I'll watch the tape tomorrow and I'll have a better feel for it. Yeah, thanks, Coach. Mm -hmm. Next question, we're going to go to Matt Hosworth. Hey, Coach, I uh, just want to ask you about Sean Tucker. I know he's been a bright spot in a bunch of games this season, but, uh, man, he kept running hard, even in the fourth quarter. Uh, that's got to – Sorry, we lost you for a second. Oh, can you hear me? Oh, okay. Now you can. Yes, we can hear you. Sorry. <laughs> okay, coach. Did you get my question, or do you want me to ask one more time? Oh, he's muted. I think. And I did not hear the end. Okay. All right. I'll ask it one more time. Um, uh, Sean Tucker. It's got to be a young man you're certainly proud of. You continue to run hard in the fourth quarter, and that's a that's a young man there that uh, obviously uh, you've got high hopes for in the future. There's no doubt that Sean is really showing off, and he's doing a nice job in a very difficult situation. And I, I would imagine as we become better and better on that offensive front that he'll even get uh, you know more explosive plays with his development based off of how he's running the football i think he's running the ball extremely well thank you very much next question we're going to go to mike curtis from syracuse.com hey coach um aside from um jacoby and morgan's um injury what did you see out there from that you were um impressed by or things you could have did. I think he, he did a little bit bit better again I thought that uh, he was steady I mean there, there was one time where he got hit and he didn't turn the ball over which is a big thing and then all of a sudden he gets hit again I mean those shots are tough especially when you think about the freshmen really haven't had an opportunity to develop their body the way they want to with the COVID-19 and the weight rooms and all that stuff being shut down from March until they were able to get back here in June and then uh, small groups, and they really weren't in their active lifting parties until around August. So he's going to get bigger and stronger and all that kind of stuff and be able to take a lot more uh, uh, shots and stuff like that with his body. But I think that he's been hanging in there tough, and uh, he's a tough kid. Thank you. We have time for two more questions. Next question is going to go to Jacob Payne. Hey, Coach. Um... What do you say to your defense, specifically the younger players, after they put forth that kind of effort and still get blown out? You know, I think the defense played extremely well. I really did. It's, you can't realize how difficult it is to go out there and, and to play twice as many plays as the, uh, as the, other, as the other defense does and, and, and twice as many plays than the offense does and still be able to give that effort, eventually you're going to break down. And uh, I thought the way they played, the way they handled this offense, based off of what we gave up last year to this offense, now they did have 
two more of their explosive players in the game. The tailback had opted out, and I don't believe that uh, Tutu played as much. I think I saw him in there for one or two plays, unless I'm wrong, but uh, he didn't play that much. But I thought the defense, even though they gave up points, I thought they played well. Thank you. Thank you. Last question. We're going to go to Adam Pillman from the Daily Orange. Hey, Coach. So, you know, we saw those two fumbles on kick, um, kickoff returns. Um, I believe there was a false start an extra point. And even looking back as far as the UNC game where we saw the penalty on the, on the, on the punt return where Nike had the touchdown was called back. Have you noticed a difference on special teams this year? And, and, and what can you assess from the special teams tonight and from the whole season? You know, the, the, the uh, play that was called back uh, in the UNC game was a younger player. I want to say it was either a freshman or a sophomore. The, uh, the, two, the two other plays tonight were seniors, but I thought that the special teams for the most part, you know, outside of those turnovers did, a, did an okay job. And, uh, you know, sometimes that stuff's gonna happen. Those kids are being, a, they're gonna be aggressive out there. I thought Nakeem had a, an excellent run before he, you know, before he let the ball go. And I thought that Hackett was making a, a break on a very difficult play. And that play is not easy to do to go up there and catch a really, really high kick with people running straight at you, where you know as soon as you catch it, you're gonna take a shot. But from a penalty standpoint, I thought that, you know, we never want penalties on, on the kicking game, but sometimes that stuff happens when you're out there giving great effort. Thank you. That concludes Coach Baber's media availability for today's post-game press.